start riding. Straight shooting. the boss. Hi, boss. Hi, Dram. We were getting worried about you. Howdy, boys. We're all set. Hey, what about the sheriff? I tricked him and his deputy out of town. Annie's watching the office. <laughs> and who's afraid of a girl? Well, I am when it comes down to Oakley. Or she can make a six-gun shoot sideways. I've even got a way to get her. Potts Weber's in town with that traveling tin shop of his. Chet Sterling's over at Brockett's bar. Won't you ride on in ahead and see if you can't rip Chet into shooting up Potts' wagon? Nobody will think of tying it in with us because it's the kind of fool thing that Chet's always doing. And it'll bring Annie out in the open where we can get a shot at her. Yeah, well, as long as she ain't shooting at me. and ride up to the Bear Valley Junction and meet Uncle Luke right away. It's important. Well, what's it all about? I'm the only deputy left in town. You can handle things around here. It's about those rustlers that are working out there. Uncle Luke might need you. I'm on my way. Now, ladies, all this merchandise I've got is all for sale. Hey, I bet you can't set her that skillet. Five bucks? Five bucks. Got a hole in it. What? That little hole? to that blame fast, I couldn't get them with that blame feet. Oh, well, I'm that blame glad to see you're not badly hurt. You're that blame right. Are you able to drive back to town? You're that blame tootin'. Well, I'll get my horse. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, uh.
Yeah, I saw him take the sack right into his home. But are you sure the men you followed were the ones who robbed the bank? I never left him, Annie. Trim Barton is well thought of around here. Well, yeah, he's a friend of Frank Sterling, president of the bank. Just the same, I saw him. Go on and arrest him, Annie. You can do it. You're after him for Uncle Luke. Come on, don't be afraid. I'll side you. I'll side you. Just your say-so isn't enough for me to arrest Trim Barton. I've got to get more information from Mr. Sterling. Come on, Target. <laughs> Going. To the bank with you. How about that kindling? Did you cut it like I told you? Oh, I'll do it after. After what? Oh, just after. You do it right this minute. Now, come on, boy. Oh, move. please let me walk to the bank with you. Oh, all right. And then you get to that kindling. You hear me? How can anybody hear anything else? Your misbehavior drove your father to an early grave. Now you're holding me up to ridicule with escapades like that with Potts Weber this morning. All day, people have been dropping in here telling me what a rowdy my nephew is. I've had enough of it. Ah, shut up. I'm going to annoy you just 24 hours longer, Uncle Frank. I'll be 21 tomorrow, and when you settle up my father's estate, I'll be gone from this dust puddle. How much is that estate, anyway? You never would tell me. And I can't tell you now. You see, the bank lost a large amount in government bonds in today's holdup. What's that got to do with my estate? Just this. Recently, I invested your holdings in United States bonds. Now, if those bonds are amongst those stolen today, you won't have much coming. If it turns out that I'm broke, I'll kill you. I don't think you'll kill anybody, Chet. You know, I'm getting awful tired of shooting things out of your hand. Now, you be a good boy or Annie will spank. We were discussing my nephew's inheritance and his temper slipped a little. Must have slipped a long way. You were ready to commit murder. Killing him wouldn't be murder. Now, look, Chester. A complete checkup is being made now. If you'll return at 8 o'clock tonight, I'll have more information for you. It better be good. His temper still seems to be slipping. I don't know what to do about Chester. Ever try putting him to work? Work, Chester? You don't know him. Maybe I know him better than you think I do. But I didn't come here to talk about Chester. I'd like to get some information on the holdup. There isn't much I can tell you now. They were masked and there was a great deal of excitement. Well... Maybe I'd better come back tonight and get your report on the losses, Mr. Sterling. Why? Where's the sheriff? Well, Uncle Luke is investigating some rustling up in Bear Valley. He and Lofty Craig should be back tonight or tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. Watch. Buck him off balance with your left, then belt him with your right. Like that. some pretty good men. Did you whip them? All of them. Cars. Boy, that's a sharp shirt you're wearing. Had it handmade over in Silver City. I bet it cost at least $25. 35 Cars. The woman over there makes them six at a time for me. You got five more? Yep. Gosh, six shirts. Here comes that gun-slinging sister of yours. And is she sore at you for shooting up Pop Weber's wagon? I only shot off a couple of caps to scare him. She might have killed me. Not unless she was aiming to. She can shoot a stone out of a fingering and never touch her hand. Oh, she can shoot some. In a gunfight, I'd have her shot before she had her gun out of the holster. That's pretty fast, Chet. It's the truth. I bet it is, too. I still think you're the best shot, Annie. But I think Chet could beat you to the draw. I'll show you. Reach, Annie. <laughs> You bounce that bullet off that stove. Sure. If your angle's right, you can just about figure which way your ricochet will go. Maybe I'd better shut up about being so fast on the draw. Mm-hmm. That kind of talk only leads to trouble. No matter how good you are, there's always somebody that's just a shade better. You know, you ought to stop talking about killing people, too, Chad. Folks don't like that kind of talk in a man. Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. Just because you're good with a gun, you think you can tell people what to do. Well, folks don't like that in a girl, either. Especially me. I like my girls feminine. Well, maybe I'm pretty good in that department, too. Come on, Tag. What's the matter, Annie? You stewing about Chet Sterling? I wish you'd quit. Chet's a good guy. He's a good guy for you to stay away from. Boys aren't expected to have any sense. But grown men are expected to have some. And bother Chet Sterling. 
I'm worried about Trim Barton. What for? He just went in the bank. That's twice he's been to the bank today. Maybe he's going to deposit the withdrawal he made this morning. Say, while he's in the bank, let's run over and take a look at his face. Oh, Tag, run over to the blacksmith shop and borrow a pair of hoof clippers. What for? Never mind, just do it. All right, all right. That pyramid's into a tidy sum, Trim. You took $12,000 in currency. That was Treasury Department money earmarked for the Denver Mint. Now, they'll make that good. And then, say, if that's the case, why not double the ante? In what way? Tell them the bandit's got $24,000. Well, that's a good idea, Trim. You're quite a financier. We'll do that. Then, there are the bonds. $70,000 worth. I've already paved the way to tell my nephew that they were his bonds. <laughs> That show-off isn't going to like that. No, he's already threatened to kill me. He won't. Just talk. Precisely my view. What did you do with the bonds and the money, Trim? Put the sack away where no one will ever find it or even think of it. And where would that be? In the coal scuttle in my living room. That's very good, Trim. We'll divide it tomorrow. If you're staying in town, let's have dinner together. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I promised Phil Kobe I'd ride over to his ranch for supper tonight. I need a shave. I'll see you later, Frank. Right. This is close enough. Remember what I told you now. I don't know if it's going to work. You do as I told you, and it will. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, Walt. Here comes that opening breath. Wonder where her shooting sister is. In town playing sheriff, most likely. What's your trouble, Bob? Can I get some help? Pixie threw a shoe. Well, the shoe came off clean. Didn't bust the hoof up none. You ain't gonna kill that crow bait to go back to town barefoot? Pixie ain't no crow bait, and no horse of mine's going barefoot. Ah, there's a real hand. Looks to his horse first.
Me, Frank. Of course I didn't. You said you were going to Kobe's. And I did. But all through supper, something kept telling me I'd better get back. You timed it well, Frank. I wasn't gone over two hours. What are you talking about? You brazen hypocrite! You stole the money at bonds while I was at Kobe's! You must be crazy! I haven't been out of this office! Can you prove that? No, I can't, but... <laughs> you see, it had to be you. You were the only other person on Earth who knew where they were. I tell you, I... You tell me nothing. Come up with the bonds and money, fast! Already? Yeah, bad news travels pretty fast. Before I could get to your uncle, I heard the bank was robbed. I just got in and Tag told me you were over here. What's the trouble? Mr. Sterling. He's dead. Chad. I didn't kill him. I walked in here and somebody slugged me. I didn't even see Uncle Frank. His gun ought to tell the story. Let's see your six shooter, Chet. shell's been fired. That's impossible. I cleaned that gun after I fired it this morning. Is the barrel clean, Lofty? Well, Craig, what's going on here? Well, we're just... We'd like to know what you're doing here, Mr. Barton. I don't have to answer your... I'll ask it, Trim. What are you doing here? Well, nothing really. Frank Sterling's an old friend. I saw the light, thought I'd drop in for a chat. Where is Frank? Frank Sterling's been murdered. I'm holding Chet. I'll ask you to verify that one cartridge out of his six-shooter's been fired. Oh, wait a minute, Lofty. I want to see the gun before... Never hand a man a cock gun like that, Craig. Now two cartridges have been fired. I wish that hadn't happened. I'll have to lock you up, Chet. I'll hold his gun, Lofty. You did that on purpose. Chet's gun has a hair trigger. You must have discovered that when you fired it a few minutes ago. Well, yes, it has, but... Craig, I demand you organize a posse and get Chet Sterling. He got away on my horse. Just how far do you think you'll get till daylight? And she's right, Trim. There is one thing you can do, though, Lofty. Arrest Trim Barton for Frank Sterling's murder. What? Oh, you little wildcat. Handcuff him to the wagon, Lofty. I want to show you something. This 
is Chet's six shooter. If it killed Frank Sterling, it had to be with the first cartridge fired, right? Right. See that cut? I made it and one like it on every cartridge in Trim Barton's gun and belts. There's his gun. Take a look. How'd the fired shell get in Chet's gun? Well, we could ask Barton, but I think I can tell you. Chet said somebody slugged him when he walked into the office. That'd be Trim. After Trim had killed Frank Sterling. Then he switched the cartridges and left. And when Trim fired that shot through Chet's clean gun, you ruined any chance Chet might have had for an alibi. That's right. For a minute, I sure thought you had the boy. All right, Craig, let's get out of here. Where's that bank loot now? In Uncle Luke's office. With just Tag to guard it? <laughs> Why not? Even Trim Barton wouldn't rob the sheriff's office. <laughs> You're wrong, Andy. I'm the man who is going to rob the sheriff's office. Now go the back way, and if either one of them give me any trouble, I'll blast you two with a six-shooter. Drop your gun, Annie. Go ahead. Gosh! Trim, Barton! What are you... Shut up! Get over there. I don't know. Where are they? They're in the bottom drawer of the desk. Get over there. There aren't going to be any witnesses. This is Chet Sterling's six-shooter. There are still three unfired cartridges in it. It'll be found here with your bodies. Let's make it ladies first, shall we? away from a murder I didn't commit. I quit Lofty's horse a block from the bank. I'm no horse thief either. And sneak back. When you left Uncle Frank's office, I picked up your gun and followed you here. I waited as long as I dared. I wanted to see how far Trim Barton would go. He went the whole distance, all right. And so did you, Chet. Right. You know, when I get around to making up my list of the all right people in this town, you're going to be right up there on top. You really mean that, Annie? I never meant anything more. I told you he was a good guy. <laughs> and my brother knows a good guy when he sees one. Oh, gosh. <laughs>